is history's strongest empire. The story of the principality of Sina. heard of it this is sea land it's not bigger than it looks it's about the size of a basketball court and the person being winched up is their prince sea land is a monarchy like an absolutist monarchy their first prince was a guy named roy bates a british guy who commandeered a world war ii naval base and declared it a country so his pirate radio station wouldn't get shut down and it worked now let's make it an empire. In real politics too, this is the only game that I think even lets you do this, basically. At least you can pick this dog as an advisor. What a capable boy. Oh, <laughs> how would you even start? Like, look at what we're dealing with here. A sea land, unrecognized. Population, one. <laughs> England's like breathing down our neck and boxing us in. I feel like I'm suffocating here. Take a look at this interview. Like, this already looks claustrophobic to me. <laughs> The real question is like, why can we even do this? I do know how they're making this money though. They have a dorky little merch shop where you can buy like royal titles or whatever. Not sponsored by Sealand, obviously. I have no idea how I'm gonna do this. I was thinking about what the utility of a place like this would actually be. Nightclub, tourist attraction, hotel and casino, F1 track. My mind pretty quickly settled on one thing. We're gonna make Sealand a tax haven. Yeah. I think that's our only option. I don't like it. But now I just need to start thinking about our next steps. How do we go from here to conquering the world? Like there's there's a big gap here. So here I was, innocent, young, blissfully unaware of how much time it would actually take to do this. The obstacle I came up against right away is that you can't play tall as Zealand. Running water, electricity, roads. I guess we can upgrade the capital too. Like, I don't know how many stories we can build on top of this thing, but planes! I'm getting a little concerned that we're just gonna end up being just C. So let's just try to cause a casual little special military operation to get some actual land somewhere, anywhere. So here's where I hatched a plan to make a huge gamble for land. Despite our population being only one, I was still able to hire a spy, to form a claim on some territory, and to hire a general and an army. <laughs> Yo, I'm doing it. I'm making big money moves. Why can't I make an army of Sealand? I was looking around at the like immediate area here. The thing I noticed, Iceland doesn't have an army. At least I don't think. As long as we have an army, we should be able to just declare war on them and just swarm them really quickly and hopefully win. <laughs> but my optimism wasn't bound to last for long. I was about to find out that things would be a lot more difficult than I had realized. It lets you build an army there. I couldn't move it out of the actual area of Sealand. This game is so bad. Oh, why? Why, Sealand? Move! Which infuriated me. Obviously, I went to go punch a wall. <laughs> I figured that maybe you also need a navy to transport troops and land them in other places like EU4 or something, because there's water colonization here. I gave that a shot. I built up a navy. I brought it to the edge of Sealand. But then I realized I couldn't even get in Sealand from the outside. You're stuck there. Opa! Oh, fuck. Fortunately for us, there is one potential out. The alternative to water colonization is land colonization. Colonize land? What land? That's not a hypothetical. Like, where is there land to colonize in the game? Nowhere in the whole entire world except for Antarctica. <laughs> Antarctica is the one place you can land colonize in this game. We, we can't build everything there, but at the very least, we can build some barracks there. And here I could build helicopters with their mobility unprohibited by English territorial waters. This shit took me so long to figure out. Like, it, it feels like a stupid ass logic puzzle or something. So now this part's easy. All I have to do is take these helicopters and just tell them to go to Iceland and hope they make it there okay. It's a long flight, but you'll be okay, I think. <laughs> oh my god, the helicopters finally made it here after a year. And now we can finally finish this Iceland war. Iceland's pretty small, so I think I can just, yeah, I can just take everything in one war. Perfect. All right, and now we have land. We got land and sea land! <laughs> 
We got Iceland as Sealand. Your capital's the tennis court in the sea with guns on it now. I hope y'all love it. <laughs> I guess the thing to do now is to keep expanding. Like, where do we go next? As Sealand, I think we should start with islands, basically, and go from there. I think the next easiest island to conquer would be Capo Verde, because they only have, like, three troops there. So I should be able to win against them, theoretically. <laughs> Come here, Capo Verde. All right, thank you for the land, Capo Verde. You're Capo West rule now because you're surrounded by ocean because sea land you will be a cornerstone of our ever expanding actual empire now <laughs> i think that's someone would like try to stop me at some point or something like i don't know this is taking neo-colonialism to a whole new level starting a new country to do new colonialism <laughs> i think the next place i'm gonna go to is ireland just because it's right here i figured they'll be an easy target because i only see like 24-ish troops i feel a little bit bad about doing another colonialism to ireland but I'm sure if they have any problems with it, they'll let me know. <laughs> Ugh. Dun 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 dun. Wah. The next place I wanted to declare war on was the Netherlands. They don't have that many provinces. I should be able to take most of it in one war. And I was feeling pretty confident about it. 128 troops here in the meantime. I think I'll be okay. <laughs> and then France joined. I didn't realize I'd be at war with this many people. I don't know if I'm ready for a war this big yet. What? Wait, is France like doing like a Napoleon into Germany or Right now like what is france doing right now that's actually really good timing then because maybe we have a chance we had some pretty tough battles it took me some time to figure out how to maneuver things correctly i had to build my army like once or twice eventually i managed to get in there i managed to take french territory the other thing i had to do and i love this about the game i adore it all of france's provinces count towards the occupation war score which you need a hundred percent of otherwise they won't accept any kind of conditions france come on i'm giving you a really good deal here. This is 70% war score. I'm only taking some of your territory. I have close to 100% war score. I don't know where to get the rest of it. And so your offer was rejected. Oh my god. Oh my god. If you know anything about France, they also have random territories all around the world. They had this one over here and this one. After all of that, I finally had 100% war score and I was finally able to take a part of mainland Europe. Now this is kind of a big deal. Like like the numbers kind of jumped up immediately. Given this, how far can we keep going? Let's try to be a little bit smart about this. And by a little bit smart about this, I mean forming a claim on Germany and declaring war on them since they were weakened in that France-Germany war too. So I, I declared war on Germany too. It was honestly a lot more drama free. It's not even that hard necessarily. It's just snowballing, right? Wait, war with Italy? Sealand versus Italy? Italy versus Sealand? Did I just get declared on by Italy? Is that what just happened? They have so many troops too. Look at this shit. But right here, this is where I thought, even though I tried so hard to make Sealand an empire, all of it would be taken away from me by Italy. Italy of all countries. And they were strong too. They had a bunch of troops. They had a bunch of boats. And my army kind of collapsed against them immediately. I lost some huge battles. I lost my naval provinces. Our boats were outmatched. Our land units were outmatched. Germany, Poland, Italy. They all kind of swarmed into all of my mainland European territory. They were taking over a bunch of my water provinces that I had colonized to. Fortunately, I had an ace up my sleeve. I still had some air units, and with these, I could fly these around and take back some of my barracks, and with them, I could take back a couple of my missile silos. Now, I had been researching this just in case. I didn't expect to have to use nukes in this game because I didn't want to nuke the planet for this, but... I can't believe I'm actually doing this. Like, I have to, though. Oh my lord. At least it works. I can do it again, too. Look. <laughs> as much as this is, like, morally very questionable and everyone immediately hates me and I already have a thousand, like, a max warmonger, this is also super overpowered. Oh my lord. I'm gonna build these everywhere, I swear to god. This is Sealand at its maximum extent. Look at this. The pure, raw might of a pirate radio station turned into history's strongest empire. I may have gone a little mad with power here. Boom. 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 <laughs> 
<laughs> I already had a maximum warmonger. I didn't care. Although some of the people in my country really started to care. Nuke them too. <sighs> but then the unthinkable happened. Sealand, my naval platform, even they began to rise up against me. I was at a loss. The home and adopted birthplace of my nation. The symbol of my country. I couldn't even reach it by land because of the UK's borders. I wanted to declare war on the UK to prevent this, but I couldn't. My government wouldn't let me. So I only had one option left, lest I let Sealand become a micronation once again. I am nothing without Sealand after all. I gathered my resolve and I pulled the trigger. The thing that had given me world-conquering might had taken everything from me. Even the highest caste of Sealandish society, the people of the platform. God, 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 hello, God. The UK was so disturbed to witness the atrocity off their coast that it declared war on me too, in turn, resolving to make us pay for our sins. The country that allowed Sealand to exist in the first place would not stand this injustice towards its enshrined micronation. I was shocked and stunned. But then I just nuked them too. <laughs> um, if we look at the statistics, we're basically in like the top three of like all of these things. Not bad for starting as Sealand though. Huh. Wow, did that take a lot of work. But there's kind of like a sick irony to all of this. We're still unrecognized, and there's nothing I can do to ever be recognized for the rest of these countries. In real life, Sealand knows it's a country. It will tell you it's a country over and over and over again, even though it never asks for recognition. It knows what it is. It doesn't feel like it has to prove itself to anyone to be who it is. I love y'all. Thank you for watching. Thank you to all the channel members too. I'm sorry that this video took so long. It, it, it literally Really took me like 20 hours to record it or something just in footage alone i hope it went well but i'll have more videos soon and live streams too so stay tuned for all of that thank you i love y'all and don't let the people who don't see you for who you are tell you who you can and can't be okay bye i love y'all bye <laughs>